Hello everyone. Welcome to this webinar on DriveWorks. My name is Jay Shalgekar. It's Jay to keep it short and simple. I'm the multi-product specialist here at Central Innovation and the products that I specialize are in SolidWorks MBD, SolidWorks Composer, SolidWorks Visualize, Inspection, DriveWorks, and SWOOD. I'll talk about these products um, and just getting started now. I appreciate your time and your interest in DriveWorks, but before we begin about DriveWorks, I'm going to just talk about the SolidWorks design innovation platform. So with SolidWorks, you have the mechanical and the electrical design packages with different modules under them for different applications. Once you have all of those designs in place, you can validate these designs by means of uh, simulation, which could be structural analysis, flow dynamics, plastic injection molding, and so forth. Uh, again, they have different modules under them, which can be uh, different for bus different businesses. And once you have this entire cloud of data available, it's hard enough to manage this, control revisions, access, etc., for which there's a tool called PDM. Um, this is one of the most recommended tools from SOLIDWORKS, um, especially for managing all the data. And what I specialize is the channel after that, which is communication. How do you communicate your 3D designs further down to different stakeholders, which could be manufacturing, inspection, customers, procurement, supply chain, absolutely anyone. And all of them require it in very different formats, file formats. So it would be really awesome to have one tool that could spit out all different file formats from SOLIDWORKS, but that would be really hard to do. So there are a certain set of tools which are catering to individual requirements. MBD, model-based definition, is one revolutionary product that's, that's uh, available now, and um, it's actually a drawing-less manufacturing solution which helps you eliminate all the inefficiencies with regards to 2D drawings. When you design everything in 3D, you break down the third dimension to communicate all your design intent further down to manufacturing or inspection in 2D drawings. It's inefficient, it's prone to ambiguity, misinterpretation. So model-based definition enables you to put up all that product manufacturing information directly onto your 3D models and send it out in 3D formats, which could be 3D PDFs or e-drawings. It's a brilliant tool and something that everyone must have a look at. Again, uh, there's another tool called Inspection, which basically autom automates your entire inspection documentation and creation process. Um, and it can help you create all the documentation that you would need for your uh, quality assurance uh, division by using SOLIDWORKS drawing files. More to that, there's Composer, which is basically helping you repurpose your CAD files to create all sorts of visual assets and uh, for all technical documentation and collateral. Um, you, you can have high resolution imagery, animations, 3D PDFs, uh, HTML outputs, interactive content, and a whole lot of this. All of them are incredib incredibly powerful tools. And so is Visualize, which is basically a photorealistic rendering software. It's basically a photo studio for your CAD files. And this is, these are different tools by means which you can communicate it to different stakeholders, but then We've got DriveWorks, which can basically automate um, your design. It can automate your design to an extent that you can enable online sales configuration. I'm going to obviously talk a lot about that as we go further. Now, many businesses today offer customized products, and offering customized products and services is actually a great competitive differentiator, which leads to more sales, higher revenues, happy customers, with more and more companies now turning to customization to gain market share, you need to be able to turn around these custom proposals quicker, design and manufacture more efficiently, and also deliver as per your promises consistently. All of this while maintaining a healthy profit, and to complicate it further, you need to do all of this while keeping a check on your competitor, because he is either already doing it, or he is intending to do it. Now to achieve this, operational excellence, there is always a trade-off. When it comes down to catering to custom needs, a lot of valuable engineering resource gets squeezed into creating these commercial documents, manufacturing drawings, CAD models, etc. And again, 
then follows the approval of these engineering drawings which needs to be done as fast as possible often hours are spent in just creating uh, best guess costings for orders that may never happen when it comes to custom ordering and this leads to the lack of time to re-engineer designs or carefully check details, basically leaving your business prone to errors, rework, backlogs, delays, which basically translates to loss of profit margins and also damage to reputation. Can you address this risk? Yes, you can. SolidWorks has an open API which makes it possible to automate and DryWorks has leveraged this possibility to build a very powerful tool or let's say a solution for this need with decades in in this arena they have achieved to get uh, you know gold partner status with solidworks as well as with microsoft now i am going to show you what you can really expect as an output out of driveworks i am on a web page and you can check this out yourselves it's driveworkslive.com there are a lot of uh, data sets set up there which we, and uh, different categories based upon uh, different industries. So you can actually have a look there and select any product that um, closely res uh, resembles yours or probably is just the same product. So I'm opening up here a demo set which is an electrical enclosure and I'm actually going to customize this enclosure to my needs. On this web page, I have the ability to interact in 3D formats with this enclosure. While I'm doing this in real time, I hope you guys can see this as well. Now it's given me a custom standard enclosure, which has got three rails, um, a defined width of 500, but I'm going to change that to my need, which let's say I'm going to change it to 750. You can numerically enter that or slide it over uh, with these arrows. And I'm going to increase these rails to, let's say four. Now this model has been created for me in real time with the changes I've made. You've got additional form fields which could be entering cable glance quantity. I'm just going to leave it as is. Going to the next stage, it's allowing me to customize the material for this enclosure. It looks like it's already galvanized steel. I'm just going to go with aluminium. Material gauge, a whole set of numerical data to enter or select. You can even set up a protection rating. So you've got a whole other set which is basically being picked up uh, from a data a database and you can select anything that you find is best suited for your requirement or application so if i just go with let's say steam jet cleaning and then move forward to the next stage now you can see it's allowing me to actually add components into the enclosure now it's created a quick schematic automatically and I'm going to add components that I need in my enclosure. I'm going to begin with, let's say, power supplies. Category three phase component, I'm going to go with, let's say, 950 watt power supplies. It's creating a CAD file to be added onto this enclosure here. I'm going to increase the quantity to two. I'm going to say, add components. And you can see the model has been added here into this enclosure for me. I can add more components if I would like, or I can edit this enclosure to add, let's say, circuit breakers. I'm gonna go with surge protection, three phase voltage. And update. So it's replaced the existing power supply with a a surge protection three phase voltage circuit breaker. I can even move these components around, which I can execute on click, or you can create display arrows to move them to maybe another bus bar. I can go on adding different components into this, but you get the point. I'm gonna to go to the next stage. Now you can see that it's created this 3D files for the components that I have added. If the, now the locking on this, I can replace the, lo the lock system with a push button if I'd like. Replacing CAD onto it. I can even change position of decal. So if there's a decal for uh, which is uh, the sign is on, on the door, I can switch it over to the wall. 
or bring it back onto the door. As I move forward, I am actually building on customization on my previous custom build stage. Now it's given me a complete summary of what I have selected, created, along with the pricing which is being calculated or picked up from, um, let's say, the CRM. And as I go forward and I'm happy with what I have created here and I go forward to place my order, you can again link this back to your CRM and pick up, let's say, if you've got a, a set of uh, wholesalers or uh, direct suppliers and one of them is probably Boston Bulls, you, it automatically populates the representative from that uh, dealership. If you want to deal with Brian and not Anne, you can pick up all of that data. So it gives you customized fields that you can make selections from. Once I complete my order, I can fill in my details. And I'm just going to submit my order now. And as, as I'm doing this, this is being fed directly back to my system, which would run the SolidWorks uh, files for me, spit out the documents that I need, and also gives you a status of what is being created and what is the status of each of them. So you've got certain documents which are already created. This electrical enclosure document here, I'm just going to open it up. It's a PDF. It's created it for from the data that I've selected and it is also addressed to Brian from Boston Bulls with a detailed bill of materials and a quotation, all available right here. This is still processing the other documents required, but it's also, also created a whole set of different drawings as I need. So this is basically the power of Dryworks. And I'm going to talk to you about not just online sales configuration, but a lot more and what runs in the background on Dryworks. Okay, I'd let this get created. In, in the meantime, I'm going to show you the different possibilities that you can do with 3D CAD online, all right? I'm here on, on another web page and I have this living room setup. Now you can see here, it's, I have different selections for changing the, the wallpaper, the, the, the flooring as well. So if I, if I go with something that I can change, um, I'm going to just change the, the decor here. And you can see there's a lamp, um, a, a, a standing lamp right here. And if I click on the lamp, it's enabling me to actually relocate the lamp anywhere within this highlighted area on the floor. So if I move the same lamp to this location, you can see the lighting effect on the wall has changed. Similarly, if I bring the lamp back to a position that's closer to the wall, you can see the lighting effect on the wall that's reflecting the light. So you can basically, I can actually move CAD files anywhere on in this 3D environment. You can have a lot more detail. Um, let's say I would like to delete any of the components within this living room area. And let's say I want to add some certain other details. So let's say I want a longer table, add it into the 3D environment. And you can see it's actually running the CAD application to on the um, web on the website. And as I have this new table placed onto this, I can even rotate it, align it as I need. Click off and let's say I want to add a flower pot or a vase right here. I can, I can select that vase and actually literally look, relocate it maybe at the top of this table if I want. So I have the ability to actually move things around in 3D space assigning it uh, to different components. Uh, if you've got something that, let's say you're manufacturing a pump and you want to create a detailed pipe layout, you can do all of that by actually adding components. So let's say I want to swap this elbow with this T-junction and maybe rotate it with these arrows, which are basically enabling me to make changes in details that I need. I can then add more details onto it, maybe a straight connector, add, and let's say I want to increase the length of the straight connector. 
So it's given me a, a slider only for the straight connector. And if, if, if I want to add maybe an elbow this, and align it to this face, if I add it here, the, the, the feature of enabling me to change the length of this connector is missing. So I can control the properties of any of these uh, 3D files that I am creating in 3D space. I'm going to jump back into my presentation to show you what's really happening behind the scenes on this. So 3D is basically a core technology of DriveWorks. Files from the 3D design packages can be saved as a DriveWorks 3D file. So this is the native .drive 3D format of DriveWorks. And these 3D scenes are easily set up in the DriveWorks administrator with the 3D document designer. So this is the document designer here. Uh, the 3D scenes are made up of nodes. So you can add nodes. These nodes can contain one or more part, assembly, light, and cameras. Nodes can then be arranged in a designer in the designer or they can be imported directly from the SOLIDWORKS 3D model. Everything in this designer is basically very easy to set up and you can set up rules for it. Now you can add entities uh, to a node which can basically provide additional properties and functionalities and uh, let's say capabilities or behavior. These properties, they can be static, they can be dynamic based on the rules and the entities enhance the scene by allowing you to add lights and cameras, move and replace models, just like what we were doing uh, in the th uh, on the website. Uh, coming to this uh, uh, demo set that we did with the pump and the and the pipe fittings, uh, you can control all this uh, content in using this properties panel. And the property panel is basically where it enables you to add static values by entering new values, where you can see image results and dynamic values which are based on rules. These rules give greater control to, for uh, all your properties on this 3D document. So basically the position, the scales, the rotations can be set up uh, as rules, um, uh, understanding the values that you are entering right here in DriveWorks. So this is what's basically happening in the background. DriveWorks works on this principle where you capture the dimensions, features, custom properties, and then you apply rules to by using logic, you know, equations, expressions, whatever can govern them. And once you once you've governed the the captured um, dimensions or features or properties, you then allow SolidWorks to create this model or assembly in real time using all of that. I've been talking a lot about rules. So what exactly is rules? Rules is basically something that defines uh, all the parameters of the design. You can devi define your uh, design knowledge and intent as rules. These rules are used to make uh, relevant decisions for you to perform actions. The, and the DriveWorks rules engine is actually a very powerful tool and it can be used in many different ways. So rules can give active uh, feedback to guide your user through available choices like what uh, we were doing as we were going stage by stage into uh, creating a custom requirement, as well as it can validate this information that is being entered in the form. With this, only the permissible data is captured and that can be utilized by DriveWorks. Using rules in DriveWorks, you can decide how your parts are getting numbered. It can even do the pricing for standard parts as well as the new parts, which are either calculated by using equations or looked up from either tables or uh, databases. Uh, rules can also drive uh, Microsoft Word, it can drive Excel uh, and many other file formats. You can also query or filter or even sort data um, within third party systems. There's so much more that you can really do. So rules are, there are a, a lot of types of rules. So it could be math, like calculating um, volume for this pressure vessel uh, by either changing length or by changing diameter. So it'll do all the calculations and define the pressure for this pressure vessel. You can have, uh, you can look up values from either lists or tables. Uh, you can control text, like actually create alphanumeric codes for let's say contract numbers, order numbers, etc. You can even have date time rules, which basically are, um, can be controlling, let's say time-based discounts uh, or let's say material availability at a particular date, due dates for delivery, etc. Uh, there can also be constraints. So 
um, you can control known values and you can also control uh, values that need validation logic is basically the heart of the triworks rules engine uh, let's say uh, for this same pressure vessel if if a length exceeds 1200 you would need a central brace so the moment your length of the uh, of this pressure vessel exceeds that 1200 automatically the central brace will be added on to this uh, cage here so also they can be true false validation so of the, it's all microsoft excel syntax based or style so whatever you can really uh, do with microsoft uh, to excel uh, like lookups and um, if if conditions and conditions all of that can be applied right here with as rules driveworks actually also uses a rule builder that can help you create and manage rules and it has a lot of wizards uh, syntax highlighting it makes it very easy to actually create rules to help you make sure that whatever you're applying as a rule is working and um, you know it's 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 not put, putting up something that's an error you can even have a rules profiler to analyze the performance of these rules and do a what if analysis you can you can drill down into every rule to see uh, what it is contributing and what is it, what it is resulting in the next stage or after rules is basically forms which is the user interface for driveworks configurator uh, what we were seeing there as we were creating this enclosure details was basically form fields uh, each stage was a different form uh, you can set them up in the driveworks administrator or the driveworks solo by adding form controls and using the rules which uh, which are running in the background to decide what to show and when you can run your configurator inside driveworks inside solidworks on any other device or even on the web page and building a custom user interface for your configurator uh, is actually very quick and easy with the driveworks form designer okay i'm i'm just going to switch back to another um, detailing to show you that with with the form fields you can guide the users based upon their selection so let's say if we want to customize this uh, uh, rack here you can uh, or the shelves you can actually start selecting what you need so if, if you're going with something that's light or super light as a configuration automatically the shelf material that's applied for that would be chipboard mdf or plywood but if you're planning to do something that's more towards uh, the higher uh, or the heavy duty applications then as you select the other shelf materials like aluminium you can go for heavy or as you select heavy you have aluminium and steel as option and of course ply and mdf won't apply so you can have complete control over the visibility of these controls and you may even hide and show uh, user interface elements based upon the security settings and permissions uh, once you've selected details here you can then set up a completely separate form field to make adjustments uh, to what you've selected so if you want to increase the height depth after you selected only after you selected the materials or the details uh, in the initial form field you can set up that as a control so customers may not have access to let's say internal job codes and discount offerings but that may be a form field for a sales rep to select um, similarly the engineering team may have uh, some exclusive form fields for for them to add let's say um, throughput time or delivery estimates or something like that so you can con control who sees what uh, within the form fields okay I'm switching back to my presentation here now along with the form fields you can also regulate the workflow it doesn't mean that using driveworks you can only attend to a specific workflow this can be completely customized based upon your business need adhering to what you guys follow at at, at any any stage uh, in this application so here is basically a very basic schematic representation of a workflow in in driveworks uh, a specification flow is a feature in driveworks that can give you complete control over customizing um, this workflow you can set up states which are like steps uh, and then configure them as you need you can customize the action on every stage um, with action triggers which we call operations uh, you can also then choose what will be created after each uh, stage um, and how they will trans so th th this is what we call transitions uh, you can then transition from one stage to the next um, 
you can then decide uh, you know which user teams can have uh, permission to perform specific actions in the workflow you can um, the, these states these transitions these operations all together form a complete uh, intelligent workflow so basically con controlling who does what when and how and to do that you can even add a lot of um, detailed macros so this can, this is like a, a step advanced further into generation of your workflow uh, this can be set up with uh, specification macros which is basically a collection of nodes which are these uh, rectangular boxes here uh, and the nodes are then connected to each other to execute um, simple or complicated uh, arrangements of logic they can be classified as either task nodes or condition nodes depending upon um, the task to be executed similarly there are these connections so the green and black so um, all the all the nodes on the left are are basically the inputs while the ones on the right bottom are the outputs so you can control um, uh, the navigation connections or, or basically the connections have different types you can have either data connections or navigation connections depending upon what needs to be communicated to the next uh, next node and what is the sequence of the connection so uh, i won't get into all the detailed technicalities but the point here is you can completely regulate this workflow the way you need if there's any stage that needs any manual intervention uh, for your design automation to add maybe manually features or details or for it to proce proceed further to the next stage or let's say even just design validation that can be completely set up with driveworks so many companies of course also use uh, third-party systems and it becomes quite important for you to have uh, interaction with third-party systems um, this data could be the information that you probably need as a part of your rules for driveworks to run or it could also basically be populating options in the form fields that is guiding the user to make selections so it could even be the data about your configured product like it could be the bill of materials uh, that you need for let's say downstream manufacturing so this integration needs to be fast and automatic as automatic as possible so with many third-party systems available driveworks can actually communicate with them no matter what your preferred integration method is it has advanced features and some specialized functionality for your projects there are actually power packs which are available to communicate with systems like paypal salesforce syspro uh, solidworks pdm solidworks cam and more to that driveworks can actually read and write data to any database by using the uh, open database uh, connection driver so that's odbc uh, which writes natively to the Microsoft SQL Server. This data can be absolutely anything from a single value to a whole database table. Um, moreover, it can also actually send HTTP requests. Um, so drivers can send web service requests. This enables drivers to actually talk to any web service. It could be your CRM, your ERP, um, and it could even be a logistics partner if they have HTTP tracking. So Driveworks has its own fully documented API and you can write code using the Driveworks API by either using Visual Basic, uh, .NET, C Sharp uh, and more to that actually we have our own in-house um, created product called Data Suite which can actually uh, be a, a connection from different uh, third-party systems with driveworks actually enabling uh, driveworks to pick up data from that manipulate it utilize it um, even validate it before that and all of that can be controlled by this single integration um, uh, product which is called data suite uh, if you'd like to know more about it uh, you can always reach out to us and we have a team that can uh, take you through an entire uh, explanation about this So basically, with all this, um, I'm honestly just scratching the surface of what Driveworks is really capable of. Uh, but with this, you can, of course, uh, deliver custom products in record time. And there are a number of case studies that we have across the globe of companies in, uh, who are actually doing that. Uh, obviously, you're redu reducing all your repetitive tasks uh, because of creating this automation. Um, you can generate all the required documents, technical and commercial, uh, within minutes, obviously breaking it in um, at least half, making it half to what you currently are. 
um, and of course all this would eventually just lead to more revenue and profit for you now driveworks is um, it's not like a plug and play product right it uh, they also understand that this this is a phase wise implementation program so they have created different uh, products uh, product categories and modules driveworks express is actually an entry level design automation which is available in all solidworks licenses so you can activate the add in uh, you can actually try to create rules for small uh, for 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 parts and um, enable them to spit out, let's say, a drawing uh, based upon rules and uh, form fields that you are making changes to. But again, it's it's quite, uh, it's an entry level. Uh, it's restricted in what it can do compared to what the Solo and Pro can do. Now, the Solo is, is much advanced than the Express, of course. Uh, you can actually create an entire Driveworks project, uh, the configurations, rules, form fields, run them, test them, allow it to actually um, create the bill of materials, letters by by programming uh, Word. Uh, you can do all of that, but the thing with Solo is it is restricting you to a single user on a single device. Uh, if, you, if you have something in mind where you want to scale to the level of what we saw with the electrical enclosure to actually enable users online to, uh, or let's say even uh, sales reps to do this, who are not using SolidWorks to do customizations and feed it to uh, and uh, to the system and let it automatically generate models and drawings and um, commercial documents, um, Solo will, is going to have its restrictions. In that case, it comes down to the Pro. So the Pro has a couple of modules uh, that you can add to it. So it begins with the administrator, which is the the mainframe or the brain of this entire system. Uh, the administrator compares with the solo on capabilities on what you can do is basically setting up drivers projects uh, the form fields design rules etc everything that will create these configurations for you once the drivers projects are set up in the administrator they, you can run them test them right there uh, and you are confident that you can then allow let's say your sales representatives to have um, that available the form fields available to them to gather the um, information for customizing a product um, at let's say a site you can enable the driveworks user license this will enable five concurrent users uh, or let's say five uh, five devices to actually uh, gather this data uh, which and feed it back to the driveworks pro server as a project this project then needs to be picked up by the uh, the user that has SOLIDWORKS to actually run that and create the models, the drawings, uh, and all the documentation for that captured project. Similar to the user is the DriveWorks Live. Now the DriveWorks Live is basically enabling the same functionality as the user, but it enables you to do that over a web page on your website uh, where you can have 10 concurrent users online uh, creating configurations, um, submitting on DriveWorks projects concurrently uh, to the DriveWorks Pro server. So these all get queued up as project to the server, which needs to be picked up and get executed. If you would like to manually pick them up and execute them manually, um, you can do that by using the administrator uh, and, and doing so. But if you would like that to get executed automatically just as the queue up uh, without allow without wasting time, uh, you can do this by, by engaging the autopilot, which, which is like the executioner. So it will process all the job queues that have that, that it has set up here. Uh, it runs SolidWorks autonomously by itself. All these projects that are being captured are then getting executed by the autopilot, which creates the models, the assemblies, the drawings, bill of materials, whatever you are you expect the system to generate for you is all being done by the autopilot. So this is how um, this whole system would work um, as an integrated solution for you, for your business and your products. And there have been a number of successful case studies across the globe, some of which uh, are listed right here. So you, very commonly used with the, the door manufacturers, uh, window manufacturers, etc., uh, because a lot of customization for their products. Um, and you can see the headlines here, which say, which talk about efficiency, just-in-time capability, reducing the design time by half uh, for generation of documents, for automation, and even within Australia, we've got a, a big list of customers who have gone completely pro using DriveWorks. Uh, we've got Auspitz in Victoria, uh, a, a complete detailed uh, case study uh, which is published by DriveWorks. So is the case which shot in groups which which build uh, custom lifts, as well as A-line building systems uh, who create uh, sheds and uh, similar products. 
and of course there's a whole other list of um, companies in Australia which are using the Driveworks Pro licenses uh, and completely going automated on the design as as well as many of them using the, the sales quotation and uh, commercial document generation with the use of Driveworks. So it's, it's a really powerful product, well tested, well utilized and a lot of references available as well. So this is a quick introduction, I'd say a very brief introduction, uh, just trying to scrape on what uh, Driveworks can really do for you. Um, of course, uh, I'd love to show you more data sets uh, uh, because that, and you can actually check them out for yourself. Um, if, if you lo log on to the Driveworks uh, live website, uh, here you can see this is the, the earlier uh, details that have, that have been generated for the enclosure that we have. Um, we, we just customized previously and all these this entire list of uh, documents that are available for you to view um, with detailed drawings. Um, it's, it's basically set up a template on how the drawings need to be represented, what are the dimensions to be captured, all of that is completely uh, specified for SOLIDWORKS to generate. Um, of course, uh, there, are, there are other uh, data sets as well uh, that you can have a look at. Um, just trying to open up let's say something like a bifolding door. So there are scissor lift uh, applications, a whole set of different products that you can really configure. But uh, with this, uh, I think it's quite clear on the functionality that Driveworks is capable of enabling users to generate. Okay, I'm just gonna show you a quick new data set, uh, which is for a bifolding door. So here you can see uh, there are, this is the form fields that we spoke about. Um, the, it's, it's again on, on the web page that we're doing and we can customize, let's say the width uh, of this um, doors here, as well as the height. You can even have an inside view as well as an outside view. Um, and then you can set up different form fields based upon what you're customizing. So let's say we pick up maple, uh, for the door frames, you can go ahead and even add mountains um, to create separators and you can also view all the selections that you're ma uh, making just to see how it uh, visual how, how it's uh, visually represented as well. So all these form fields can be set up. Uh, you can s select different um, material types for even glass. It could be frosted, it could be glazed. Oh, and as you're making detailed changes, the price is getting updated uh, with every change made. So with all of this, you can you can then generate all the documentations and the com uh, commercial and technical that you need and um, ask Driveworks to spit it out uh, by using SOLIDWORKS. I hope uh, I've been able to give you a good understanding of what Driveworks can do for you. Uh, if you've got any questions, feel free to reach me on uh, or email me. Um, uh, this is my email. It's jesh.hulgaker at centralinnovation.com. Happy to take any questions um, and um, thank you for your time. I appreciate your interest. Um, we'll soon have another webinar um, which would uh, try to cover more functionality of what you can do in different scenarios as well. Uh, what if you're not using SOLIDWORKS and you would still like to use DriveWorks and we, we are trying to cover something on that front. So we'll keep you posted on all of that and um, in the meantime, let me know if you have any questions. Thank you.